Hello, everyone. We now have, I just have really good news for you all today. My name is Alfred Cromwell. I am the founder and president of City Tutoring. I am speaking to you as I always am from the city of the beautiful city of Lynchburg in Virginia. And I know some of you have asked me to improve the lighting. I'm doing the best I can. You got to remember that I'm kind of off grid. I'm doing the best I can. I normally use a gas light or an oil but I was able to get some a, a bulb. I found it lying in the in the basement somewhere, and um, it works. Uh, it's about 40, 40, 40 watts. Uh, so it should uh, the lighting should be a little bit better in this video. Uh, this is a very short, very, 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 very short video because tomorrow I'm going to actually do uh, an in depth video about this. I'm really upset about something, and I it's something that has been bothering me for a very long time. And that is the, I, I, as I've told you many times, I go around many schools and I inspect and I do a lot of observation of what the young people are being taught these days, especially the, the high school students, but also college students in many cases, community colleges and all that. And I recently saw something and I'm going to put it on the board. And I want you to tell me if you think it's a true or false question. That's why this video is so short. I just want you to think about it. I want you to tell me if you think that the following procedure is true or not. If you think it's uh, true or false, you can leave a comment down below. But by the way, if as I've always said, if the videos are being useful to you, please continue to subscribe. Please continue to help this channel. You, everyone who has subscribed, you've been a great help. I am eternally grateful for all of you who have subscribed because we're just uh, continuing to produce a lot of content. And so... Uh, by the way, starting in January, we are offering, I say we, City Tutoring, we're offering a course in linear algebra. That's for those of you who are in college and also abstract algebra. So that's going to be for the for our college crowd. But also in terms of if you're in high school, for example, we're going to be offering, we offer all the uh, math courses. The, the procedures will be uh, explained to you very shortly, in short time. So this is the what I was talking about. Now, if you have learned the rules of exponents by now, there's something called the power rule of exponents, and the power rule says the following. When you have an exponent inside a parentheses, in this case, let's say you had any number raised to the m exponent, and then outside the parentheses, you have another exponent. In this case, we'll just call it n. The rule says, the mathematical rule says to do a to the m times n. Right? So I hope your teachers have explained this to you by now if you're watching this video. Well, if that's the case, let's look at this example that we have here on the board. Since we have exponents, we have an exponent inside the brackets, and we have... Uh, another exponent outside the brackets, then, the, then of course, by the rule, we would do negative 1 to the square multiplied by 3 halves. And if that's the case, we just move. I mean, multiplying fractions is easy. 2 times 3 is 6. So we have negative 1 to the 6 over 2. And 6 over 2 is actually gives me 3. And so if we simplify this, we have negative 1 to the third exponent, which means negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, and that gives us negative 1. So my question to you is true or false. Is this a correct statement? Am I right? Are you using the power rule? Are you right? Now let me know in the comment section. Take a moment to pause. Think about this and let me know. All right, after you've paused the video and you've done the work, if you said that the answer is, if you said that this is true, that is absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. And there's two things happening here. Either your teacher didn't explain it to you, because I've seen a lot who, who don't. They call themselves math teachers, but they are anything but. And by the way, if you are a teacher and you are watching my video, believe me, this is not an attack on teachers. Believe me, I am the, the, the furthest person you can think of who would want to attack teachers. I'm not attacking teachers. I'm attacking what is wrong. And there are a lot of people, as you know, they're called imposters. There's a lot of people who call themselves a teacher and they're not really a math teacher. 
right? So this is actually in support of the real math teachers out there because I know that there's a lot of them. But there's a lot of people who, there, there are a lot of individuals out there who should not even set foot in a classroom. And so if you are a math teacher and you know the difference and you've been explaining it to your students, then by all means, you know, carry on. If your teacher said that this is correct or you believe that this is correct, there's something very wrong. There's something very wrong. And that's why in the video tomorrow, we're going to talk about why this, this rule that you learned, if it's not clarified. You see, math is not anything unless we have very clear guidelines, very clear rules. And I don't mean rules in an arbitrary sense. I'm talking about rules that are based on proofs. Right? It's not something arbitrary. Is it? For example, if I told you that the square root of a negative number doesn't exist, is that because Professor Cromwell says it? Is it because God says it? No. It's not, it's not because I say it or because God says it, but because there are fundamental rules, there are, there are proofs, there are definitions that are very important in math, and that we have to look at these things in a very clear way. If we don't look at things in a very clear way, then, of course, nothing makes sense at all. And it leads to confusion, it leads to frustration, and that is why students are getting problems wrong. Right now... I'm going to talk a little bit about this briefly because, as I said, I want to do a more detailed video tomorrow, Friday, which is when I usually have a little bit more time to do these things. The I think most of you would agree with me that the when you have a number that is squared, it is the same thing as saying if you if you do the inverse operation it's the same thing as saying to take the square root. So negative one to the square. Is like saying. Um, the square root of negative one. And if you've watched this channel before, we actually talked about that in one of the previous videos, you know, this is absolute rubbish. There is no such thing as the square root of a negative number. And that's why we, we, we created, mathematicians created, the imaginary numbers. There, there's a reason for that. There, there is no such thing as two numbers that when you, multiple, that when you square them, you're going to get a negative number. Do you know of any? Can you tell me? Of course not. So this is upsetting to me because I'm seeing it over and over again in our in, in the classrooms. I'm seeing so many students do this. And they are doing this not necessarily because they're a student. They're doing this because in many cases, their instructor is not a qualified mathematician, is not trained in math, and is lead, it, this leads to confusion. In fact, I've seen, um, I believe I had it somewhere. Let me see if I can actually, no, I don't have it with me. There was a, uh, I picked up a textbook recently from a local school where they talk about the rules of exponents and they don't even clarify. They don't even bother to clarify these restrictions. Uh, there's a lot of restrictions that come with the laws of exponents. So if you said that this was negative one because you applied this rule, uh, we got to talk, you and I. We got to talk. We got to enroll you in city tutoring. Perhaps you need uh, some mathematical foundations because this is going to lead to more and more errors. And that's one of the things that we do here at city tutoring. We actually uh, diagnose the moment you come into city tutoring, depending on, of course, the course that you want to take, let's say, whether it be algebra one, whether it be algebra two. The first thing we do is give you a diagnostic. We give you a placement test. And believe me, the placement tests here are no joke. It, it shows exactly where you stand mathematically. And that is how we create a plan for you based on the deficiencies that we see in that report. We create a plan for you so that you that we can tackle those deficiencies and make a mathematician out of you, or at least if not a mathematician, at least someone who is competent enough to do well in your math. That is the main mission of here at City Tutoring. Actually, I've, I've said it many times before. We're not an academy for geniuses. I'm not interested in a math genius or, or, or what's so-called, right? Because I don't like to use terms like that. Uh, or I've had parents come to me and they say, do you are, are all your students gifted? Uh, my concern actually, uh, my burden is for, for students actually who struggle in math. It is for students who struggle in math. Uh, and a lot of my students are uh, athletes. And a lot of my students are people who have, we, we either have athletes. And we, we, I mean, we also have people who are brilliant. And what they do. But that's not the focus here. The focus here is to train you, whether you're an athlete, whether you're someone who is struggling in math. And we also train people who have discipline problems. 
uh, we, to, to get them into a structure. We've had students who they have no stru- they have no structure in their family life, no structure at school, no structure in their family life, and of course they're failing at math. You you cannot do well as a person if you if you don't have a, a very firm and steady foundation in everything else that you do. So I wanted to share this with you because I want you to think about it. And I want you to stay tuned for the video that I'm going to produce tomorrow where we talk in in real depth about the real laws of exponents and what you can do. But let me know. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Let me know if you were tempted to do this whole, oh, <laughs> we're going to just multiply out the, the exponents. And as I said before in the beginning of the uh, video, please subscribe to the channel. We, we cannot move forward unless we get a lot more subscriptions and that way because we, we want to make math available to a wide group of people. So to those of you who did subscribe, I really do appreciate it. To those of you who haven't, I don't know what you're waiting for, but, I, but it's going to be very beneficial to you, believe me, because there's going to come a time when you are tackling these questions and you won't know what to do. So thanks everyone uh, for your time. And stay tuned for tomorrow. I'm going to produce two videos tomorrow. One of them is going to be on the laws of exponents, the real way to tackle the laws of exponents. The other video is going to be on the recent, uh, the this past summer, the Algebra 1 placement test here at City Tutoring that we gave to students and the report that we got, the, the feedback uh, that was that was produced after so many students took it and, you know, kind of what happened, what we were testing, what deficiencies we noted, and all of that. And again, we're not concerned with grades here. It's not about A or B or C or D. We're just concerned with the right thinking, training you to think in the right way, training you to prove things, training you to think mathematically about things, and to detect these sort of uh, these sorts of mistakes. So if this was helpful to you, I'm glad it was because uh, a lot of students struggle with these kind of questions.